What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now during the sensitive time we're in right now with disease and whatnot, it is a very scary time to be alive. Thankfully the first few vaccines for coronavirus are being tested right now so fingers crossed a cure does come about from all of this. But today we are discussing illnesses that have been around for a lot longer and still aren't treatable. These are the top 10 scary diseases without cures. Starting us off with number 10 is acquired immune deficiency syndrome aka aka AIDS. Now, I'm sure most of you guys know this but AIDS is a chronic potentially life threatening disease that is caused by contracting HIV. Now HIV is sexually transmitted via infected blood or through childbirth or breastfeeding. Some people can test positive for HIV but not develop AIDS for years and it really just depends from person to person. Contracting HIV will lead to flu like symptoms for the first few weeks like body pain, fever, weight loss, diarrhea, rashes and so forth. Now HIV attacks your immune system killing the cell in your body and it turns into AIDS in 8 to 10 years. AIDS can cause fatal weight loss, neurological complications and liver and kidney disease. But thankfully if you do start medication for HIV it can significantly slow the spread of the disease tenfold. So although it's been around for 25 plus years there is still no cure for this disease that has caused 32 million deaths since its discovery. And I feel like people have a huge stigma against people with HIV or AIDS but I feel like they're not properly educated on what it's like and the fact that if you are on medication you have HIV like your condition is very much livable. It's all about the stigma. Get rid of the bad stigma. Coming in at number 9 is Nigleria fowleri, also known as the brain eating amoeba. I remember the first time I heard the word amoeba, it was because of the amoeba boys on the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> Simpler times. So, this microorganism is usually found in hot geographic areas like rivers, ponds, hot springs, and etc. It's found in soil, in un or minimally chlorinated pools, and if it's inhaled through your nose or enters your nasal passage, it is over for you. It causes extremely rare, severe, and sudden fatal brain infection. Symptoms take 1 to 9 days to set in and they include nausea, hallucinations, seizures and the patient will usually die within 2 weeks. It's so rare that's probably why they haven't found a cure for it but still they should. At number 8 we have multiple sclerosis aka MS. Now MS damages the insulating covers of the brain and spinal cords, nerve cells and that disrupts the ability of the nervous system to transmit signals properly. It can take several forms where symptoms can hit you in isolated attacks or build up over time. MS is something that so many people suffer from and its symptoms include literally anything that affects your visual, motor or sensory department, loss of sensitivity, blurred vision, muscle spasms, trouble talking or swallowing, chronic pain and so forth. Doctors aren't fully sure what causes MS to begin with so it's even harder to come up with a cure for it. After diagnosis a patient's life expectancy goes down 5 to 10 years and in 2015 out of the 2 million people that had it, 18,900 died. Treatments are being tested all the time but there is still no cure. Filling an seven slot is Alzheimer's disease, this chronic neurodegenerative disease that has been around for so long. I feel like I've been hearing about it since I was born, probably since before I was born even. It mostly affects people after the age of 65 and in 60 to 70% of cases causes dementia. Now the symptoms start with not remembering certain periods of time, forgetting family or friends' names and more. It progresses into forgetting info you had just learned, trouble knowing where you are and just more confusion in every circumstance you're in. And those stages can take a while to happen but the onset of dementia can make things progress so much quicker. My grandmother-in-law actually has dementia and my mom went to see her and she was doing so well and literally with Within two weeks, she deteriorated so rapidly. It was such a shock to the system, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's very quick. Now, the cause of Alzheimer's isn't really understood. Doctors believe it's genetic or inherited or can be caused by a history of head injuries or hypertension. There aren't any medications that decrease your chance of getting it, and there are also no treatments that stop it or reverse it. Most people just have to start relying on caregivers to get by. Now, at number six is Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, aka CJD, and that's what I'm just going to call it because it's so much easier. It's also been called mad cow disease, by the way. So, this disease is caused by prions, which are tiny misformed proteins found in the neurons of our central nervous system. Because of their misfolding it affects the way signals are processed and therefore can damage our neurons and therefore result in degeneration in the brain. The first signs of CJD are pretty critical, it starts off with rapidly progressing dementia and then that leads to memory loss and your personality changes and it can also cause a person to see hallucinations. Involuntary jerky movements occur in 90% of people as well. Speech impairment sets in, balance and coordination dysfunction and more. 
People that get diagnosed with it usually don't survive because it's universally fatal because only 15% survive for two or more years, and that is because it causes the death of the brain's nerve cells. Doctors are still unsure on how to prevent it, so I mean, there is no cure. Coming in at number five is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, aka ALS. Remember the ALS ice bucket challenge that literally brought this motor neuron disease into the limelight? We all remember that. We were all nominated. So, ALS essentially kills the neurons that control our voluntary muscles, and it usually affects people once they get into their 50s and 60s, but not always because some cases are genetic and inherited. It starts off as just muscle weakness or atrophy, sometimes it can result in trouble breathing or swallowing, cramps or slurred speech. Over time, the person finds it harder to move the affected areas, and their muscles will start feeling very stiff. Most people lose the ability to use their hands or walk, speak or swallow like it's quite a serious disease. The cause remains unknown in 90% of cases, so I mean, how do you even cure it if you can't even get to the source of it all? There's treatments available that do improve the symptoms and extend life expectancy, but nothing stops it. And statistically, people die two to four years after their diagnosis, which in hindsight is really not a long time. At number four is fatal insomnia. From the name and my assumption that everyone knows what insomnia is and does, you guys could probably guess that this rare disorder results in fatal trouble sleeping. It's caused by a mutation of a brain protein and is completely non inherited. Fatal insomnia has four stages of symptoms. It'll start with the person's insomnia getting a lot worse, panic attacks and paranoia will increase tenfold during these months, then panic attacks and hallucinations become more noticeable, then comes the actual complete inability to sleep and rapid weight loss. Lastly is dementia, in which over the course of six months, the person becomes more and more unresponsive before their eventual death. It's actually more common in people with Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, which I just mentioned beforehand. Sadly, fatal insomnia has no known cure, and the average time someone has to live after diagnosis is about a year and a half. That is so sad. I know a lot of people that have insomnia, and I just can't even imagine it. Progressing to something like this. Filling on a three saw is Parkinson's disease. Now, this disease is a long term degenerative disease that mostly affects the motor system. It usually affects people after the age of 60 and it'll usually start showing itself with small tremors of the hand while at rest. Movement will progressively start slowing down and be harder to execute, making daily tasks like dressing yourself or showering extremely difficult for the patient. The muscles become progressively more rigid and limb movement becomes more limited. The cause of Parkinson's is unknown, but scientists believe it's down to environmental and genetic factors. You're more likely to get it if your parents had it, and people more exposed to certain types of pesticides, or have smoked in their life, or have had head injuries tend to have it more. In 2015, 6.2 million people were affected, with 117,400 deaths. There's no cure for it, and like previous diseases on the list, the medication and treatments available only improve the symptoms, not stop them. Now at number two is systemic lupus erythematosus, aka lupus. This autoimmune disease mistakes the healthy tissue in the body as a threat and starts attacking it. Symptoms are hard to diagnose since lupus is known as the great imitator because of the fact it mimics the symptoms of literally any other illness. It's more common in women than men, and women also tend to have more relapses. 70% of people will start having skin symptoms like lesions, thick red scaly patches, rashes, and other symptoms like mouth and nasal ulcers and hair loss. Most patients are anemic and develop joint pain as well. Lupus can literally affect everything your heart, kidneys, liver, eyes, lungs, literally everything. The cause of it is unclear, but again, it's said to be due to environmental and genetic factors. So far, there are no cures for it. The medicines that do work well for it have huge side effects, so I mean, it's hard to use and hard to mitigate. And finally, at number one is COVID 19. Obviously, I had to put Corona at number one since it is the one disease plaguing the world right now. By now, we should know the symptoms of this highly contagious disease are very similar to those of a common cold. Sniffles, blocked nose, coughing, fever, and in bad cases, pneumonia in both lungs. But individuals can suffer from no symptoms at all and still test positive, so it's very up in the air. The virus attacks your lungs, it literally attacks the membranes inside them, and it can affect anyone no matter how old they are. But obviously, it's proven to be more fatal for the elderly and people with compromised immune systems. Vaccines have started being tested on human volunteers, so I mean, let's hope we do find a cure for the disease so we can come out of quarantine and things can just go back to normal. But can I just add my own little bit of tea? Can I just add how a lot of US government officials seem to have invested in the company heading the vaccine there before the release of that information? Like, how do they know? <laughs> very interesting. And the fact that they don't want to make it free for the world? Again, very sus. I hate money hungry people. Anywho, let me just 
stop going off, it's over. Anyway, that is the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and it wasn't too morbid for you. I know I'm just a host on Top 10, but I feel like I know my shit pretty well. I am the daughter of two doctors. I am part doctor myself, if I do say so myself. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. That's Dr. Eamon Hassan to you. It's found in soil in un or minimally co- It's found in soil in- <coughs> I don't know. It's found in soil in un or minimally chlor- Minimally? It's found in soil in un or minimally chlorinated- min It's found in soil in un or minimally chlorinated pools. Now ALS essentially kills the neurons that control our voluntary muscles and Like I saw the mirror shake. Yeah. It starts off with a person and it <laughs> starts off with a person as um it starts off with a person having regular ins it starts off now that <laughs>